Hi, it's Lil from Mubai Marley, and today this video is for Julie at Purple Monkey Manor, my very good friend in Texas. Now, she very kindly sent me the IOD Heavenly stamp. So you can have your gander like that. And today, what I'm going to try and do, which is probably going to make everybody laugh, is a sort of Sistine Chapel inspired um, piece. Stay tuned. So we're going to be putting the heavenly stamp on this. Oh, I've had it in my armory for a while. I wanted to keep it. It's so, so cute. You, When you get a pot cupboard, you have to make sure that you really, really clean it inside with bleach um, and hot soapy water. Um, it's the only time I would really recommend doing something like that because it's a pot cupboard and I also clean the inside of them too. Um, Today we're going to be doing um, lots of reds on the kind of main carcass and we're going to be trying to, to recreate with the heavenly stamp because they're, they're angels and cherubs and this is the kind of Sistine Chapel look on the ceiling so I'm going to be doing some clouds, stamping some angels, hand painting them in so it's going to be sort of reds, sort of bluey clouds, sort of rich colours and golds in the clothing. So I'm going to get on and I'm going to get my paint ready and I'm just going to show you how I'm going to start painting this piece. So this is the paint we're going to be using, Annie Sloan's Emperor's Silk. The middle one is a chocolatey brown that I mixed up and the last one is Annie Sloan's Primer Red. And I am going to do something a little bit like, put them all on and see what sticks. So I'm going to kind of start with some brown and then I'm going to maybe move into my primer red and kind of do that more sort of here um along here kind of thing and bring that bring that down kind of into the red reds now and i'm just going to kind of like really kind of just blend them all into one another as a paint um you know sort of i want a bit more red here you're going to have to do two coats, but this is going to kind of start it off. I'm ignoring these panels, but I do want to get down this little lip. So I've done the whole thing twice. Inside has been done. It's all nice and fresh. So now I'm going to close the cupboard doors. And I've done the sides this blue already, so that's why my brush looks like this. But what I've got here, these are the self-leveling paints because I want this where our stamping to be nice and smooth to make it look like almost, you know, like more like a printed piece as opposed to, you know, with all the, the chalk paint with its texture. So I've got an Oxford Navy and here I've got a Gainsborough blue. On the side, I did try adding a tiny little bit of real blue, but it kind of made it look a little bit greeny. So what I'm trying to do is kind of get a blue sort of, sort of sky. Now I've got a mop my brush here, which is really good at getting into the edges. And all I'm going to do is put a dark blue right round the edges first. It's not easy to do on camera. I don't want to get... Uh, So that's all I'm going to do there with this. I'm going to try and get as much of that off my brush. But I might just even give it a wee wipe. Coming with the Gainsborough blue. And all I did on the edges of the, on the other side was just blended them together. Now everybody says that self-leveling paints and self-sealing paints don't blend. But they blend well enough for what we're looking for. This is just the, we're just making the blue for the background. And you're going to have to play about with this for a wee while going every way try not to get it onto the cabinet until you've got something that you really like so I'm just going to play around with this now until I've got a blue that I really like if you could add this tiny a touch of tip this sort of greeny sort of color around the edges but I think it kind of just makes it more sort of green now this isn't we're not blend we're not we're not we don't have a blending brush here because it's self level on paint we're just mixing the two colors together without blending them too much that there's a sort of like they've got different kind of like shades in it and that's all I'm trying to do yeah 
keeping my sort of darker blue right to the edges because that kind of frames what we're doing. I'm going to go on and play about with this off camera and I'll do the other one and then we're going to get to stamping. So this is what we have um, in the Heavenly Stamp. Now I am going to want, and I'm going to keep, do an unusual thing, I'm going to keep these on the mount. So I'm going to cut this chair about and this chair about. I'll just start with this one first because this is the side I'm going to work with. So Michelangelo obviously didn't use stamps, <laughs> but I'm sure it'd be much quicker for him if he had. Oh, I've cut the wrong one out. <laughs> anyway, you can see what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut the other one out off camera and start on this end, but you can see where I'm going to go. So it's going to be something like this because I would like the trumpets to kind of match on both sides. So I'll go away and cut the other one out and we'll start on this side here. So this is what this this there's quite a lot that comes with this set the heavenly stamp but i'm only wanting right now to start with these now i've cut them out and i've kept them on a mount um because i'm going to be quite positional with these today and normally i wouldn't use mounts like all id stamps before you use them i find it sandpaper just rub over them just to give them a little bit more tooth um i'm going to set the rest to the side just for a moment uh while i get my sort of positioning right now I would have liked them, preferred them to be like this because I'm going to paint some clouds for them to sit on but they're going to have to be a wee bit more upright. Now I can either do this sort of position and keep it on and just have the wing hanging off um, which is going to be a bit like that and his trumpet's going to come on later. I don't want to... Well, yeah, he could be doing that. They're supposed to be kind of trumpeting up in the ear like that but I think... I could I think I prefer them with a little bit of their on a cloud and they're kind of going a wee bit like this. So this is going to be tricky, but this is just our first stamp for painting this. So it doesn't matter how it ends up on this part, just as long as we do a good job with our second stamp. So I'm just going to show you my, I'm being quite bold. I mean, maybe I should have thought a little bit more about this. I have thought about it. I have thought of nothing else but this for the last few days on the best way to use this stamp because I don't think this stamp necessarily is Christmassy. I mean, it, I think it's a kind of all year round good one for your armory. It's, it's a good stamp, this one. So I've stamped my little... Now, I'm only going to really get one chance at this because his trumpet's going to touch. So I think I'm going to do something like this. And I'm going to focus on stamping this part first. It's easier to catch all parts if you leave your stamps on the mould. Um, I always think on the back and sorry, not on the mould. Now I'm going to go across here, hold my jaws in. Oh, and just get his trumpet, just so I know where I'm painting. And then what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to do it right up into that edge there. Right, here we go. Let's see how it looks. Fabulous. Right, so we're going to paint this after that. So um, we're going to paint it. <laughs> well, we're going to try and attempt to paint it. We're going to paint this. We're going to have the other one going the other way. So I'm off camera. I'm going to position my other little um, chair up there. This is the positioning of this part. We haven't got to the side yet. But what I'm going to do is, because I've stamped this, I've got all my paints ready. You're going to need some some fine brushes, some thick brushes, this is from a clouds obviously, um, some tiny little brushes, all the brushes, you're going to need them um, to, to fill this in. Now, I've said this many times, it's just a suggestion, you don't need to sit and do every single part, your stamp will sort that out when you stamp over the top of it again, so you don't need to worry about that. So I'm going to just set up a camera on the tripod and you can just see me paint this in.
Deep and divided, liking for you is all I need. Until my so what I've done is I've put some little cherubs here and here, and I was just testing out how this would look gold, and I'll show you what I did there. But at the moment, what I'm doing is I am getting the big, the big wings. So I'm using the, the right wing for there and the left wing for here to um, just stamp the edges of the wings down the sides. Now I haven't quite made up my mind whether I'm going to do them white or I'm going to do them gold. I have a hankering to do them gold um, but I'm not sure how much they'll stand out but maybe they don't need to be glaringly standy outy. So this is the first stamp so I can use the same ink because I'm going to be painting it in and then going over the top of it anyway. Uh, I think maybe what I'll do, although it'll be a little bit more hassle, is I think I might paint them white and then do gold on my gold paint on my on my um, stamp. So I'm going to go off and I'm going to paint those, and you'll see those in a minute. But just to show you what I did here, it's just a little bit of gold paint. Um, and all I've done is I've rubbed it. There's a bit of cat before horse here. I mean, normally this is the last thing I do, but I just wanted to kind of get an idea of where the cupboard was going. So you just, you don't put too much on. You're just burnishing it really, um, making sure that you touch all the, the areas with the detail. And that's why you can, it's a nice idea if you do chalk paint and kind of bring the relief out with your handles. It gives them a little bit more grit when you put the gold on, I always think. Um, what key points to remember when you're doing this stamping make sure that your paint before you do your second lot stamp is a hundred percent dry if not you're just going to get a murky mess so that's my top tip for this so there you go so I'll go in and paint these on either side and we'll be back again in a minute okay so what have I done so far I painted these in I added a little bit of gold I did it I didn't go around it I decided the black would make it stand out and I just added a touch of gold then stamped it so it was white, a little bit of gold, then the stamp. I was trying out this shape here, which comes with it, and we'll get to that in a minute. But before that, I've got a little star. It's from the Christmas set, and I want to kind of add some stars because, like, there's not enough going on right now. <laughs> I've decided the two side panels are just having clouds. <laughs> um, so, um, hmm. I think I need a little bit more paint on that. Why is it when I do things to camera, they never, they, they, they just don't, they don't ever seem to kind of do their thing. Whereas when it's just me, they're no problem. I'll try that again. So this just came out of the, one of the Christmas sets. Now, I know that people will be seeing which Christmas set. I think it's the one with the baubles and things, but I'll have a wee look and I'll get Martin to drop the link. 
Mm. Right, okay, back to the drawing board. I am putting stars on this, but I just need a little bit more moist paint. This one here was really quite, um, quite simple to do, and I'm gonna recreate it in this orientation down here. So I'm just gonna quickly, I think the problem is, I don't want you to see this off camera. I don't actually have a sponge for this and I'm painting my stamp, which is not a good look. That's an no So I found up here that my drawers, there's a little bit of this gold and they don't quite match up. So I got a little bit of non sort of semi-circle. So we'll see how the bottom one goes. It should probably be a little bit easier to do. So I just did that on here. And all I did was turn the orientation around and do it the other way here. So I'm just going to do that for you now. It's just so you don't go, oh, well, when does she do all this? I, I'm conscious that sometimes I kind of do things so you just don't get bored. Um, yeah, it's a little bit off as well, actually, down there, but we'll, we'll, we'll forge on. So um, I'm going to do this here. This part, this part here also has a line, a sort of border line, which I'm going to put round here. And I'm going to write the words, I'm going to write the words angels um, in Italian, uh, of which I have just forgotten. I knew earlier. <laughs> We're not doing very well today. This is a new day, you see. I've not quite got my eye in. <laughs> right, so that's going to go here. I'm going to have to do something about the fact that they don't quite um, meet and put something here. I want that to be a little bit straighter, so I'm use my stamp to do that. So I've got this and this. I'm going to put my lines around here, I think. And by then, I'll have got my stars working and we've got the stars on. And I might do a wee bit of filming of that and then we'll get to some words here. And on the top, I, I was thinking there's quite a big blank space on the top. And what could I do on there just because there's quite a lot going on in the front is I thought I might try some of these flowery inlays, the indigo floral inlays on the top. So that's what's happening on the top. So I'll go on and do all these little parts and then we'll get to a little bit more stamping. Okay, so my microphone um, went quiet there and I'm so quietly spoken, you can't hear me. So um, we had to get a new microphone. And unfortunately I had to stamp this part here, but I'll just explain what I did. I'm using one of the flowers from Lady Shalott stamp. Now, I'm just wanting to kind of, a suggestion of a sort of fancy floral border, and I wanted something that wasn't too big, so I chose this, and I'm just using some of the green here, because I want to start bringing in some of the green with a little bit of the yellow, just to kind of give it some differentiation of color, and all I was doing was stamping along, um, in this piece here and what I said off camera was you know if there's a part where there's a sort of negative space like up here just just put it in you know just here and there along this border just until you know you've got your border filled I'm going to be doing this border here and up the top along here I'll be using the stamp when we come back I'm going to be putting the words along here and putting the inlays on the top and letting it dry. Popped some, some stamp letters on there and jelly. Um, angels in Italian because I was doing a sort of kind of Italian. I think you can clearly see the Sistine Chapel and I have now parted company. <laughs> but, but the inspo was in there somewhere. So I've done that and I just got a little acrylic marker and did some tiny stars just to fill that negative piece of space. The front's done, so I'm moving on to the top. Um, on the top, I had one sheet of the indigo um, florals intact, but the rest were pieces and parts. So this is not going to match up, So, but I'm, I'm not too concerned about that. And if you've never done this on top of a finish, because I want to keep the, the darker reds and the browns and everything that I put on, all you need to do is apply your lacquer reasonably, you know, not too wet because you'll splodge it up, but again, not too thin that it um, it doesn't um, embed onto the paint. And this is just raw chalk paint this is going onto. 
I am putting that on top of here like this. Now, what I would do next is what, put water on top, but I just want to get them all down at once and I'll do that all at the end. So as I said, this isn't going to kind of match up, but I'm not too, not too worried about it. It was just pieces and parts I had left over. And we're finished. This was done today for Julie at Purple Mon Monkey Manor, um, my good friend in Texas, and she very kindly sent me the heavenly stamp. So what did we do? We chalk painted it. We used self-leveling in the sort of recesses. We painted we stamped we painted and then we restamped again and we recreated a scene which in my mind i was channeling the sistine chapel but i think i went um off piece a little bit but we're done for today so i've been laying for me by marley thanks for watching